Hello, good day. Welcome to our channel. If you are taking thermodynamics this term and you want to learn more, just follow this channel for more lecture videos. Welcome to our first lecture on thermodynamics. We will start this chapter with a brief introduction and some overview. To start with, let's define first what is thermal science. Basically, it deals with heat and it involves the transfer and conversion of energy. Thermal sciences are usually studied under the subcategories of thermodynamics and heat transfer. And for the brief background, the word thermal stems from the Greek word thermi, which means heat. Therefore, thermal sciences can loosely be defined as the sciences that deals with heat. Today, it was not only referred as heat, but of any physical sciences that deals with energy and the transfer, transport, and conversion of energy. How important is it to learn about these concepts? Well, the design and analysis of most thermal systems such as power plants, automotive engines, and refrigerators involve all categories of thermal science as well as other sciences. And there are many applications to cite which involves these concepts. Just like designing the radiator of a car, which involves thermodynamics and heat transfer. While it requires fluid mechanics to determine the size and type of water pumps in order to perform mechanical work. This only means that the applications and concepts of these sciences are very broad and useful nowadays. And the reason for studying different sciences separately is simply to facilitate learning without being overwhelmed. Once the basic principles are mastered, they can then be synthesized by solving comprehensive real-world practical problems. Now, all activities in nature involve some interaction between energy and matter. Thus, it is hard to imagine an area that does not relate to thermal sciences. There are a few examples of these applications which are very common and can be found anywhere. Take for instance this refrigerator. It is a device that uses mechanical work to transfer heat from a cold region to a hot region. They do the opposite of what an engine does. While the air, co air conditioning systems, it works using a thermodynamic cycle called the refrigeration cycle. This is done by changing the pressure and state of the refrigerant, commonly, commonly known as coolant, to absorb heat from the inside of your home and then pumps it outside. While the thermal plants is a power station in which heat energy is converted to electrical power. In most cases, a steam-driven turbine converts heat to mechanical power as an intermediate to electrical power. Water is heated, turns into steam, and drives a steam turbine, which drives an electrical generator. Lastly, the automobile, automobile radiators. These are heat exchangers used to transfer thermal energy from one medium to another for cooling and heating purposes. And for us to understand how this application works, we need to recall one of the most fundamental laws of nature, the conservation of energy. And this is an essential concept that we should remember in learning thermodynamics. It simply states that during an interaction, energy can change from one form to another, but the total amount of energy remains constant. That is, the change of energy is equivalent to the energy input minus the energy output. This only means that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but it will just transform into another form. So take for instance this windmill. It harnesses the power of the wind for purposes like grinding grain, pumping water, and, gener and generating electricity. Now, to learn about thermodynamics, thermodynamics can be defined as the science of energy. 
although everybody has a feeling of what energy is, it is difficult to give a precise definition of it. Energy can be viewed as the ability to cause changes. The name thermodynamics stems from the Greek word thermi, which means heat, and dynamis, which means power. And that is a description from the early efforts to convert heat into power. Today, the same name is broadly interpreted to include all aspects of energy and energy transformations, including power generation, refrigeration, and relationships among the properties of matter. Although the principles of thermodynamics have been in existence, existence since the creation of the universe, thermodynamics did not emerge as a science until the construction of the first successful atmospheric steam engine in England by Thomas Savery in 1697 and Thomas Newcomen in 1712, as shown at the figure. These engines were very slow and inefficient, but they opened the way for the development of new science. Traditionally, thermodynamics has stated three fundamental laws, the first law, the second law, and the third law. A more fundamental statement was later labeled the zeroth law. Now, the four fundamental laws of thermodynamics express empirical facts and define physical quantities, such as temperature, heat, thermodynamic work, and entropy that characterize thermodynamic processes and thermodynamic systems in thermodynamic equilibrium. Let's talk first about first law of thermodynamics. It is simply an expression of the conservation of energy principle, and it asserts that energy is a thermodynamic property. While the second law, it states that entropy, which means randomness and disorder, in a system can stay the same or increase but not decrease. It asserts that energy has quality as well as quantity, and actual processes can occur in the direction of decreasing the quality of energy. As an illustration, take a look at this cup of hot coffee left on a table eventually cools, but a cup of cool coffee in the same room never gets hot by itself which means that the high temperature energy of the coffee is degraded, meaning it transformed into a less useful form at a lower temperature once it is transferred to the, to the surrounding air. About the third law, it predicted that when the temperature reaches absolute zero, meaning 0 Kelvin or negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, entropy will go near zero. For the zeroth law, it is the basis for the measurement of temperature. It states that if two thermodynamic systems are in equilibrium with a third system, separately, they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. Now, let's discuss further the relationship between classical and statistical thermodynamics. This macroscopic approach to the study of thermodynamics that does not require a knowledge of the behavior of individual particles is called the classical thermodynamics, meaning it is a study of a whole system. While, um, if you want a more elaborate approach based on the average behavior of large groups of individual particles, we should learn about statistical thermodynamics, meaning the study of individual molecule. And this microscopic approach is rather involved and is used in this text only in the supporting role. And that is the brief overview about thermodynamics and now let's learn about the other subcategories of thermal science, which is the heat transfer. We all know that energy exists in various forms. In heat transfer, we are primarily interested in heat, which is the form of energy that can be transferred 
from one system to another as a result of temperature difference. Take note of the basic requirement for heat transfer in the presence of a temperature difference. There can be no heat transfer between two mediums that are at the same temperature. For example, we all know from experience that a cold drink left in a room warms up and a warm canned drink put in a refrigerator cools down. This is accomplished by the transfer of energy from the warm medium to the cold one. The energy transfer is always from the higher temperature medium to the lower temperature one and the energy transfer stops when the two mediums reach the same temperature. Another example, another example, we can determine the amount of heat transferred from a thermos bottle as the hot coffee inside cools from 90 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius by a thermodynamic analysis alone. But a typical user or designer of a thermos is primarily interested in how long it will be before the hot coffee inside cools to 80 degrees Celsius. And a thermodynamic analysis cannot answer this question. Determining the rates of heat transfer to or from a system and thus the times of cooling or heating as well as the variation of the temperature is the subject of heat transfer. And you may be wondering why we need the science of heat transfer. After all, we can determine the amount of heat transfer for any system undergoing any process using a thermodynamic analysis alone. The reason is that thermodynamics is concerned with the amount of heat transfer as a system undergoes a process from one equilibrium state to another, and it does not indicate how long the process will take. A thermodynamic analysis simply tells us how much heat must be transferred to realize a specified change of state to satisfy the conservation of energy principle. Thermodynamic deals with equilibrium states and changes from one equilibrium state to another, while heat transfer, on the other hand, deals with the system that lack thermal equilibrium, and thus it is a non-equilibrium phenomenon. Therefore, the study of heat transfer cannot be based on the principles of thermodynamics alone. However, the laws of thermodynamics lay the framework for the science of heat transfer. And I think that is all for today. And this is just an overview and we will elaborate and expound all the thermodynamic concepts that I have mentioned as we go on to our lecture video series. Learning physics concepts is fun and I hope you are now motivated to learn more about thermodynamics and its application. See you for our next topics. So this is, these are the next topic, the dimension, units, dimensional homogeneity. Till next time, thank you for listening. Ciao!